This is Tom Bizantz. I'm Mr. Numbers, and this is, we had our intro uh, webinar to addition on the number wheel, and then we did went through the five um, webinars, and now this is our bonus webinar, which is a question and answer one, and also just, I'd like to do some focus on important points, uh, and also, um, just kind of some other things that that I feel like are valuable for you to get. I, there's always more stuff uh, that's there. So I'm going to take you to the slideshow. Uh, now, here is uh, plain number kids playing with numbers. And I, I feel like this is such a crucial part. I'm really seeing more and more that um, the more that we try to make kids work at learning math. It, it's a little bit like learning a foreign language um, on a foreign planet. It, it, the words, you're trying to teach them a bunch of words and they don't mean anything to the kids. So what I'm trying to really focus on, and I think that is really helpful for kids, is to have them do what they, how they naturally learn, and that's to play with things. And playing in a number wheel is really great because what you, if you want to learn anything, what you really want to learn is the patterns in, in, in anything. And the patterns in numbers show up so beautifully in so many different ways. And I'll show you some of those today of how valuable it is on a number wheel to do it. There we go. Are you ready to play? Uh, because I want you to play. Uh, on this presentation as well. This is our sixth, uh, after our preview, so actually our seventh, our bonus webinar on the number wheel. And uh, today we're dealing with a lot of things. The main thing that we're dealing with is your questions. And one thing that came up was dime jumps uh, for kids. But we're also, I, I did a little bit on Twister on the number wheel. I've got another twist <laughs> on that. And then there's zero on a number wheel, nickel jumps and subtraction, place value in squares, more on multiplication, and more on geometry and arts. But we always got to have a little bit of Kelvin and Hobbes here. So uh, here Kelvin says, uh, help me with his homework, okay? What's six plus three? Hobbes says, six plus three. Yeah, well, this one's a bit tricky. First, we call... The answer, why, is in why do we care? <laughs> now, why may be a square number, so we'll draw a square. And we'll make this side six and that side three, and then we'll measure the diagonals. I don't remember the teacher explaining it like this. She probably doesn't know higher math. <laughs> when you deal with high numbers, you need higher math. But this diagonal is just a little under two. Okay, here, I'll draw a bigger square. <laughs> so there's a whole world of, of crazy explanations for it. And I call, I, I think of a goal of, of math as MLM, minimum language math. You know, the more kids get into uh, language, uh, you get into Hobbes' world. <laughs> you know, it's something the teacher said and it doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, but hey, um, keep going uh, and it just keeps getting weirder until they they give up so I, I really like having them experience the numbers experience the patterns in numbers because once they get the patterns then they make sense for themselves of it and things fall into place and they're actually creating their own math system that matches everybody else's rather than trying to learn somebody else's math system now here is Heidi at uh, Girls Incorporated, where I volunteer uh, every week. And um, she thinks this is important math um, for many paths to math. And uh, here that is. A great way for different girl, girls with different learning, kind of a bit different ways of learning to capture an understanding of how of basic math. Basic arithmetic, things like adding and subtracting and the relationships, the patterns that we see with even and odd numbers, for example. I think it's really great because it's interactive for the girls. And 
I think a lot of girls, especially at that age, learn really well with moving around. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great. Right. I hope we see more of that kind of expanded learning experiences in school and things like that. Because all of us learn in very different ways, especially the younger girls. They need to move mm -hmm. in order to get involved. So uh, Heidi would like to see my pattern play math really more in schools because she really sees how the kids respond to it, how they enjoy math. Uh, after school, they come to this after school program and they still really enjoy uh, doing math for it. Now, nine dime jumps. We talked about nickel jumps. And uh, this, is, this comes from Andreas. Um, and Andreas is uh, one of my viewers, and uh, he really liked the nickel jumps uh, video here, and he thought it could also be used for nine jumps. And I actually will do a number wheel as part of the ten, the dime jumps or ten jumps, <laughs> uh, and I think that could be used well in this. So here is this. I'll start at just this first part of this video. And here's another way to look at it. And we have five blocks here. If we count by fives, it's real easy. We have five, 10, 15, 20. This is review for you here. 25, 30. It could even be faster. It's real easy and simple to count by fives. And then we'll get rid of that. But here's what's really cool is it's just as easy after practice to count by five starting with a different number. So let's go back and start with one. And if we add fives, nickel jump, we go five plus one goes halfway across around the wheel. And you'll see in a moment, I could get another to wheel six. on this. And then five more takes us to 11. Can you see where that's 11? Add five more, it takes you across the wheel again. To 16. Can you see where that's 16? Just goes back and forth between ones and sixes. Add five more, and it's 21. And I'm going to stop more, this here, and, it's and we'll move on to dime jumps. So and those are nickel jumps. Works the same way. So I want you to play with dimes on the number wheel. Now, we went around zero there, and we bring out 10. And we go around 10 more. And of course, that's 20. Go around the wheel again from zero, and that's 30. Go around the wheel another time, and that's 40. And we'll just go around one more time, although you can continue going as many times as you want, and that is 50. And that wheel of going around is what we could use with the nickel jumps as well, going halfway around. So we just go down to five and then back again. So now we can go to one, and now we're at one, and now we can go around 10 from one. And there's 11, we added 10 to the one, but it's one, one, one. Now let's add another 10, going around 10 to that, and it's 21. So it's one, 10, one, 21. One, it all end in one. Go around again, and that's 31. Go around again, and that's 41. And go around again, and that's 51. And of course, we could do it from any number. So here we do two, 10, two, or 12, 22, 30, 32, 42, and 52. So it works. You can do it from three, four, 
um, doesn't make any difference. Now, uh, last week I did some of uh, the twister, and I did it just with uh, loose cards. Um, and uh, I really like using the rug uh, that I use. So I've, I've got the big rug that's uh, a five foot diameter, and then this inner circle is five is three feet. And that really helps kids because uh, their feet and their legs can only stretch so far uh, for little kids for doing this smaller uh, version of that. So that's helpful for them. So here's a video of kids playing, and they just love to play on the number wheel. And, of course, that's where they learn. So here they are. Start at 5'4". 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 You go next to it. What's next to the You got to stretch over and get some space. Oh, yeah. Now your leapfrog is going under. Or going up under. She can go around it or she can go under it. Okay, now you're on. So she was at 6'3. Six, six, now she's at 7'2. <laughs> You see how much fun they're having, and watch this girl skip away here. She's she's really liking this. They're willing a little bit. You see all the kids having fun here. So I don't know if you caught that that nine zero window. Uh, and I'll go over that in a minute too. So that's six and two. Seven and one. You see how much fun the kids have in this class, right? <laughs> And so here's four girls that all want to do it together. And they're on six, four, seven, three, eight, two, nine, one. A 10 truck. <laughs> they're on a 10 truck. So it's just really fun uh, to see how they, how they are with it. Um, and uh, okay, let's uh, continue here. Um, so I mentioned that that eight window uh, last week too, and I just want to show how important that is. That whatever kids get a pair of numbers, what they want to work toward is toward zero. And when you go to zero, the number that it's linked with, that number is what all those other pairs add up to. So it's the magic, um, and it's the answer key. Uh, to any window, any number pairs that you do it, is you want to work to zero and then look through the window and the number that it's connected to, the line that it's connected to, that, like here, eight is the answer. So um, you can look <laughs> through the window and see the answer. What I want to show you about windows is, uh, let's just go down here. And we'll go um, four and five. And if you're at, if you're adding four and five, then you can go down one and up one, a parallel line, and it's three and six. Go down one and up one, adds up to the same number, two and seven. Go down up one and down one, another parallel line goes adds up to the same number. Go down one and up one adds up to the all these add up to the same number and if you look through the zero that's the window 
and it's nine. They all add up to nine. So you know from that that one and eight and two and seven and three and six and four and five and five and four and six and three and seven and two, and eight and one, all add up to nine. Well, that's really cool. So um, let's look at um, at eight here. So eight, uh, four and four. If you're doing adding four and four, well, that's cool. So then uh, the ones on both sides of it are three and five. Again, the next one's next to it, which is down one, up one, is two and six. And then one and seven, and zero and eight. And we always have the kids work toward zero. They're working toward zero. When they hit zero, that's the goal, because you look through the zero, look through the window, and you follow it down, and it's pointing, the line is pointing to eight. And that adds up to eight, one and seven, two and six, three and five, four and four, five and three, six and two, seven and one, eight and zero, and nine and nine adds up to 18. So it's just really cool uh, to see that as you look through adding any numbers on a number wheel, you just follow the numbers. So here you got, um, let's do seven and seven, but well, then you split them and it's six and eight and five and nine, and four and zero, up one, down one. And then, because this is going up one, this is actually 11 here, 11 and three. And this is 10 and four. And so seven and seven add up to, this is the ones digit. So as you know that because the seven is bigger than four to start with, that it's gotta be 14. So it ends in four. The answer ends in four, and it's either four or 14 for each of them. And it's real easy to figure out whether it's four or 14. So all those numbers add up to um, four or 14. So it's just really cool to look at any numbers. These are all 11. So if you start with, uh, say, six and seven, then you go to five and eight. And so kids move up the line, four and nine, three and zero. All right, we're at zero, so look through the window, and you're looking at three, and these all add up to 13. And all numbers on the left of zero add up to one plus the number, so it'd be 13, and over here on the right is one and two, and zero and three all add up to three. So you can see how that works. Anyway, I think that's just really cool how that all works there. Now, here we have... Uh, subtraction and to me the, um, the the cool image here is this wheel because this has all addition and all subtraction facts in this one wheel and it's very easy to read it's the same wheel that's on uh, your math frisbee disc uh, it's just reversed so that the numbers are inside and then the small wheels are outside rather than inside. And it actually just gets uh, those smaller wheels bigger to be on the outside. Uh, and it's really easy to do. So how you do subtraction here, and I went through this last week, but I just want to make sure everybody's clear because it's really a beautiful system. If you want to do um, 5 minus a number, you go to this wheel. 6 minus a number, you go to this wheel. 7 minus a number, you go to this wheel. 8 minus a number, you go to that wheel. Let's do 9. So 9, you subtract a number. Well, you just find that number on this wheel. And let's say 9 minus 6. So you go on this wheel, you find on the 9 wheel, because all these pairs of numbers add up to 9, you do 9 minus 6, and the arrow points to 3, or the line points to 3 there. If you do 9 minus 2, you just follow the line, follow the arrow, and it goes to 7. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 1 is 8. It works for any number on this wheel. And 8 minus any number, 8 minus 3 is 5. 8 minus 6 is 2. 8 minus 1 is 7. 8 minus 8 is 0. 8 minus 9 is all by itself circled, so it's got to be 18 minus 9 is 9. Again, this is either 8 or 18. 
Same thing over here. This is all 11. So uh, one, of course, is, <laughs> is pretty simple. So most of this is actually 11. And you can kind of see these are all on the left of the wheel. There's a little bit of angle there. This is not quite, this is pointing so that these are all to the left of zero. And they all add up not to, to one, but to 11. So 11 minus any of these numbers is real easy. 11 minus 7 is 4. 11 minus 3 is 8. 11 minus 9 is 2. It's real easy to do for any number. And when you're playing with visual techniques, it's just really cool because what happens is all the numbers um, and patterns are visual. And, and patterns show up everywhere. So when you're playing with visual stuff, now the numbers that are five apart, like uh, going from uh, zero to five are the big jump, right? Going halfway across, going through the diameter and one and six and six and one and two and seven. It's every other wheel here, three and eight and four and nine. Those are all nickel jumps going right through the middle halfway around the wheel. And those will show up elsewhere with these middle numbers. And one and six, two and seven, three and eight are all five apart, four and nine, zero and five, one and six, two and seven, three and eight, four and nine. They're all five apart. So it's really easy to find those five apart nickel jumps there. And like I say, visual patterns show up everywhere. So see the wheels that are close to each other, the two numbers that are close to each other? Three and eight, that's a nickel jump. Four, nine, five, zero, one, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine, five, zero, one, six, two, seven. Those are all nickel jumps too. So it's really cool for to have kids find those patterns, find the nickel jumps that are close together. It's really a cool thing to do. Now, I want to just go through the uh, step stride hop skip jump uh, again for you. Again, that's something I did last week. But I think it's really one of the crucial things because it works backwards as well as forwards on the number wheel. Let's take a look at our number wheels. So we're going from one is a step, two is a stride, hop, skip, and a jump, three, four, five. And you can go backwards. Nine is a step, eight is a stride, and a hop, skip, and a jump is seven, six, five. A jump is a five either way you go around because it's the diameter. It's the longest way along. And going backwards and forwards are both easy. So you can do that from any number. So here, let's just, um, let's reverse it and go from five. So a step is six, a stride is seven, a skip, a hop, hop, a skip, and a jump up to zero. Going backwards, a step is to goes to four, which actually is going around nine. So that's why it's important. You can add nine by just going back one. A stride is going back two. If kids learn to go forward and backward, that going back two is the same thing as going around eight. We'll take you to three both ways. And a hop, a skip, and a jump which also takes you to zero. So you can see just how easy that is uh, for any number for doing it. And if you go around, you know, on these wheels, so it's one, two, these are each steps going around the wheel, nothing fancy. And going backwards, you're adding nine each time, nine, 18, 27, 36, 45. You're adding nine just by going back one. Going forward, this is your strides here. Two, four, six, eight, zero, or you go backwards. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. The last number it makes for um, the the uh, stride uh, number. The last uh, ones digit is what you're looking for. This beautiful thing is both the threes and the sevens. Threes go forward. Three, six, nine, twelve. And backwards, 7, 14, 21, 28. Uh, this whole thing is going, uh, they're all hops. 
Every one of those is a, is a hop, forward or backwards. Here's our skips, and our skips make the star. And it's the fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and backwards, six, 12, 18, 24, 30. So it, it makes it really exciting and fun for kids to play because they really love to, to step, stride, hop, skip, jump. It's really fun for them to do. And then, of course, the nickel jumps can happen from zero to five, but they can also happen from one to six, two to seven, three to eight, and four to nine, all the way around. So it's just really cool how that all works. Okay, so let's clap for around just a 20, okay? Three, so here's some kids one, kind of playing with it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, twenty. And I repeat that ten one is just so crucial. The eight, the seven, the six, and going backwards is so crucial. The three, the two, the one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Go to twenty three. Okay? Ready? How quickly kids get to large numbers. Uh, it's really fun uh, to do it. See how fun it is. And a three or four year old could do this. They can count to three. That's all they have to do. So I'm going to skip out of this uh, because uh, I wanted to show you more stuff. And so here is jumping by fours. Because kids want to just get bigger and bigger numbers. Zero to four, good. And they want to be involved in it one way or the other. And you can hear the kids get ahead. They're figuring it out. And it makes a star, yeah. You see how exciting, you see how exciting this is for the kids to do it. So it's really a wonderful um, thing for them to play with and create the stars, and they love that. They think that's really fun, and the six create a star as well. Now, I want to do a little bit on this, a little bit of everything today, on place value on number wheels and, and showing you, um, for instance, you can do three number wheels, and you have the ones, so you got one there, and then have a different number wheel for the tens. And I do that a lot of times when they go around to counting to 100, I do a second number wheel that they keep track of the tens. So I got four tens and one one there, and then a third number wheel. We got eight hundreds, four tens, and one one. Eight four one is real simple and easy. Um, and you can also do a decimal point in there. So you do 250.5, and then this become hundreds, tens, ones, and this is tens. And then of course you could have hundreds and thousands and billions and, <laughs> All with number wheels, and whenever they get in doubt, they must come back to the number wheels as far as numbers, and it all boils down to number wheels. And even when you get into negative numbers, um, 
it's kind of interesting to just explore zero. You know, if you have uh, five of something, four of something, three of something, two of one, and then you have none, and then you can actually go in the other direction. You can owe one or two or three or four. Um, and there's, you know, you can look at this wheel here is if you start from zero and you go this way, you go that way. And if you start from zero and you're owing, you go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, or owing one, two, three, four, like that. So that's, that's an interesting way to explain it visually uh, to kids. I want to say a couple things more about uh, geometry. Um, because number wheels are so visual and so many lines and circles and arcs and they're a natural transition to studying geometry in terms like parallel and horizon, uh, horizontal and vertical and angles and rectangles and triangles and complementary angles and pentagons and pentagrams and symmetry and the golden mean, which is the basis for nature radios uh, ratios and for beauty uh, so there's just so much here just in in that um, and it's so fun it's this uh this is really the threes um, but exactly what is it what's going on there is it two pentagons or one ten-pointed star well it's both um, it's just really really cool and um, I, I think combining art, the kids love to draw uh, with the number wheels, and I make I make uh, art part of every class that I do at the uh, Girls Incorporated class. And here's a couple examples of anything with ten of something evenly spaced can create a number wheel. Anything with five evenly spaced, especially if you have something in between. It can also create a number wheel. So kids can create their own number wheels uh, and have great fun um, using um, these fun ones or creating their own for doing it. And you can see where that first one uh, was exactly um, the five wheels here and in between the wheels. Those are your, your 10 points for doing it. And this is a fun one <laughs> for pentagons. Uh, going around and here's some more and here's some more and that's a beautiful one and it's got 10 points so that could be a number wheel as well so patterns and squares now this is really fascinating to me um, and it, you may want to watch my video on uh, squares Mr. Numbers and Squares, Google Mr. Numbers and Squares, and it'll come up with the patterns, the numeric patterns on it are really fascinating, and they're with the ones digits, and then a different pattern with the tens. And I wanted to show you those on the number wheel. Um, so if you square zero, it's zero. If you square one, it's one. If you square two, it's four. If you square three, it's nine. If you square four, it's 16, ends in six. If you square five, it's 25, and it created an N. And then even if you go on, it's, the pattern continues. It just goes backwards. So six times six, you go back to 36, and then 49, and then 64, and then 81, and then 100. And then 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, and you just continue on. Um, with with the, the ones digits, it just makes this N, this fancy N, back and forward. That's the ones pattern. That's all it is for it. And no matter if you go up to the thousands, it just keeps creating that N pattern. Now, the pattern on the tens digits is... It's just stepping by one. It's one, two, three, four. Or 16, 25, 36, 49. One, two, three, four. Then those are steps. Now it starts striding from four uh, to six. 
and then to 881, say 4, 6, 81, and then 100. Isn't that interesting, the pattern? And that continues. So it goes from 100 uh, to 121. Um, it, so that's 12 in the tens, and then 144, and 169. And so it's 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. It's all strides going around the wheel. And then from 169, it goes up by threes. So now we're in hopping by threes, 16 to 19 to 22 to 25 to 28. And there you are at 28. And from 28, so if you continue that, you're striding by threes. So if you continue that, you're going to actually create the threes and sevens uh, star pattern. So that's the whole thing carried out. Now here, uh, you're going to uh, 329, uh, so 32 to 36. You're going up by fours. 32, 36, so you go up to 40, 44, 48, and 52. And look at that. You've created the star pattern with the tens pattern. The last digit, 260482, has created the star pattern. For the, for the tens digits, squaring the numbers, uh, it's just in right now you're at 23. And that continues with the fours, then the fives. Uh, the fives just go across from two to seven. 52, nine, 57, six, 60, you know, uh, 52, 57, 62, 67, 72. You're just going back and forth with the tens digits here for those. And then you go up by sixes and you go up by sevens. Uh, here's going up by sixes, 78. 84, um, 90, 96, 102, and 108. And you've created the, the stars pattern. It's, it's just fascinating how these patterns uh, show up everywhere and so easily in, in such fun ways uh, for doing it. Now, two things I want to show you on the... Um, on my projector camera are one is how to do a number wheel using an old DVD or a CD. And the other thing is uh, looking at this pattern, I, I've given you an earlier version of this, and this is another version of this. And I'll show you on the, on the document pattern uh, how that works. We'll do the DVD and CD wheel, and then we'll also show you a little bit on that, um, on that, uh, worksheet uh, that I also sent you. And what I'm going to do is do uh, show you real quickly a CD. So this is an old CD from Pitney Bowes that I got, and I'm going to just hold it down and draw the outer circle, and I'll also draw that inner circle. And notice what we have here is a really nice circle. And kids can make a beautiful, perfect circle. And then um, in your number wheel edition ebook, there is a sheet that has one of these here. And so you can find the center of the circle and using the center of the circle, you can mark a top and a bottom that are exactly right across from each other. So that becomes zero and five for doing it and then uh it also has this sheet you and you can create one if you need one um because it's pretty easy to to figure out um and you i i do two at a time i do uh one from zero and one from five i probably should have done the, the one first but it doesn't make any difference I'm just doing one here and one there, and then I go one here. And you can do a one number at a time, but I just find it easier to or more efficient 
you know, you do two at a time. And it's kind of fun if kids learn to do this, uh, then they're going to uh, To do it and and now like one thing kids really struggle with is getting really even um, markings around for the numbers and you'll actually notice with this this may be a little smaller here it doesn't make any difference if these are a little bigger a little small if you go from zero and five that's the most important thing because then uh, your numbers across and up and down uh, will all be uh, accurate. So you can do your, your one, your two, three, four, you already have your five, your six, your seven, eight, nine. And kids can create that. It's their own number wheel in just, you know, about a minute. And it's a very beautiful number wheel and they've created it themselves. And, and they find that it's much easier for them to do the, the, by themselves than if you give them a number wheel. They take ownership, and it's so important for them to go, this is mine. They create it. It makes sense to them. It's the way it should be. So um, then they can do, you know, the fours, four, eight, two, six, zero and they've created their their beautiful pattern and it's it's wonderful and it's um really great for them it's so valuable uh that kids learn that all the numbers on the wheel here are actually if you flatten this out you have zero and nine let's go down to five actually i'm going to go down to five here because it's really obvious here Zero and five are five. On the right are one and four. So you can put four there, and then two and three. And then nine and six, and eight and seven. And if you go or literally around the table, you go zero, one, two, and it's all adding up to five or 15 over here, but it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It, it's all in order. All the numbers are, are in order for that. And if you go, let's go up to the 9 one, it's just at an angle like this. But if you flatten it into a table, you have your 0, 9 here. And then you have one, two, three, four. Well, have one, two, three, four. You add those to the numbers that add up to nine. You get eight, two, and seven, and three, and six, and four, and five. You can work it out individually, and you can also see the overall pattern of zero one two three four five six seven eight nine it works the same with if you're doing sevens you got zero and seven then one and six are going to add up to seven two and five and three and four and nine and eight are going to add up to 17 over here and this also is zero and seven are seven and it's also 10 in 7 or 17. It's both of them. So on the wheel, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It just goes around. It does the same thing. We already did it with 5. And then let's try 3s. So 0 and 3 are 3. 1 and, of course, missing numbers 2 are 3. And then 9 and 4 are three, eight, and five, and they just go, okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is the missing number. Is six and seven, 13? Absolutely. You can see how that works. And with even numbers over here, um, 
I'll slip it over this way. There we go. Um, even numbers, you just double the end numbers. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the numbers that add up to 10 are 0 and 10. 1 and 9, they're just the numbers across from each other. 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6, and 5 and 5. You can see where this table here is the number wheel. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is doubled. So you have it 5 by itself down here, or down here. And then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then for 8s, it's uh, 0 and 8 are 8, so 1 and 7, 2 and 6. And, of course, you're doing 1 down, 1 up. 5 and 4 and 4. And there's so many different ways, if you, if you didn't understand that, I mean, it's just so many different ways to look at the same thing. Visually, if you see it one way, you got it. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four is by itself, so you repeat the four, four and four are eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it works for all the numbers. It's just a really fun uh, way to do that. So enjoy that and have kids explore that and go, you know, they enjoy it. Have them have fun with it. I really enjoyed creating all this uh, with you. I'm really glad you joined me and were part of it and i hope that you share it with kids and i hope that you share with me um exactly uh what you learned how you learned it um and uh oh i've got i've got one more thing uh that i'm going to show you just just for fun because the kids taught me this the kids said that a one in one is a window they said, what do you mean by that? And they went, well, one plus one equals a window. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Enjoy this. And please do let me know that, yes, Mr. Numbers at PatternPlayMath.com uh, will get to me. So... I'm going to leave that up for about a minute here. Um, but it's just Mr. Numbers at PatternPlayMath.com is how you can contact me. And let me know what, you know, what you're doing, uh, where you can see this used, any ideas you have for me. I'd really want to collaborate with you on how to make this all better and how to get it to kids and how to have a good time with it and more games that you come up with or your kids come up with for playing on the number wheel. Thanks for being with me. I appreciate it. And take care. Bye for Mr. Numbers.